going on everybody? It is Jay and welcome back to another video. But this video is going to be on dart frogs and how to care for them and some tips. This is the day-to-day -day practices to show you how easy it is to keep such an amazing animal. Keep in mind, they are poisonous dart frogs. Hey, hey, be careful with that. But in the wild, they're poisonous. In captivity, they do not have the ability to get to that food source and therefore they are no longer poisonous. Yes! So if this is your first time checking out one of our videos, thank you so much. Do us a favor, subscribe. Most of you, I believe 73%, are not subscribed. And then hit that notification bell and you're on your way to becoming amazing. Actually, you already are amazing. But if you do hit that notification bell, you will be notified on all of the cool content that we will be putting out. And if you're feeling saucy, you should check out the members only area. Yeah. So let's get right into it. We're gonna be talking about dart frogs and the care. I'm not gonna go over how to set up a vivarium because well, if you look above, yes, there is a video that was done and it was done well, you folks have told me pretty well. So once you've got that all squared away, now it's time for dart frog care. All right, let's talk about what size vivarium. Well, 10 gallon aquarium would do, or an 18 by 18 by 18 enclosure. Anything bigger than that, perfectly fine. Now remember, when you're keeping these dart frogs, you wanna keep the same. So if we're on the Dr. Seuss level, you get three blue, who knew? You don't get two blue and one red, that means that's not good. Uh, that's not very good, Dr. Seuss, but there it is. 18 by 18 by 18 is my standard and above, and you could put three or four uh, dart frogs in there comfortably in that bioactive niceness. I don't know, the most important thing, temperature and humidity, how do I keep it up and how do I maintain it? Well, it's pretty simple. With your temperature, the ambient room temperature is not too bad. And you're gonna have an open top in terms of a screened, ventilated, that you can cover to keep humidity in, as you can see right here. But ideally, you want to keep that humidity at 100%. Now it can go down into the 70 percentile, but you really, really want to keep it up near 100%. And you should be able to gauge with your own eyes what that vivarium looks like in terms of moisture. But if you're unsure, there are always devices out there that will help give you a digital readout or an analog readout, but it's completely up to you on if you use them. But 100% is my go-to. But temperature is also very fluctuating with dart frogs. Because think about the rainforest. You know, the rainforest is gonna shift, especially at night, during the day, during rainstorms, things of that nature. So when you're looking at temperature, you do not want the temperature to get below 65 degrees in there. And even if it was near 65, I would probably like to keep it up in the mid 70s. But there's a sweet spot. That 70 to 75 degrees is perfect. Yes, 70 to 75 degrees and 100% humidity and these dart frogs are thriving. So there are devices again that you can get, you know, a thermometer or a thermometer hydrometer combo pack. Completely up to you if that's what you use. But in the end, we know that temperature no more than 80 degrees, but we would love to say 70, 75. And then as far as humidity goes, nothing below 65%. But if it were me, I'm shooting for 100 every time. You can do it! What do we feed these things? Well, there's a multitude of different things. You can feed them wingless fruit flies. Yes, wingless fruit flies and springtails. Uh, also, if you have any other sort of cleanup crew or kook cleanup crew, C-U-C, you will find that they will probably nibble on those too. What I feed is wingless fruit flies that I culture from a starter culture that you can get from Josh's Frogs or anywhere else that you decide to get your stuff. And then I keep springtails, these dwarf white springtails. And these guys give me the ability to not only continue to seed vivariums, keep that cleanup crew going, and provide a different food source for the dart frogs. 
are my plants going to go bad in this vivarium with the dart frogs? Do I have to do anything? And the answer is yes. You should probably be trimming these plants and you can repropagate them inside this vivarium as well. You clip, dip, and go. There's nothing that is going to go wrong really unless you just dump a ton of water in there and water gets really stagnant. But you can see it with the glass in front and so you just don't want water to stagnate and hang out at the bottom. But if it does, have a way to either vacuum it up with a small pump or small shop vac or a drain plug. I mean, that's up to you. But yeah, so these have been going for over a year and they don't stink, they look beautiful and I trim just like I'm trimming right Get now, it's, it's every four months and take out the dead stuff. It's time to feed. I feed three to four times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then once on the weekend if I've got uh, some extra time. But I'm using Rapashi's Vitamins Calcium Plus. I sprinkle liberally into a to-go cup. You could do this in whatever method you want. This is just how I do it, and I'm showing you to make it easy. And then I grab the wingless fruit flies and I crack open the lid and then I put them inside that cup. And then once they're inside that cup, some will get out, I will kind of shake around a little bit and uh, get them all powdered up so that they're ready to be fed to the dart frogs. And then it's time to feed the dart frogs. I do it in the same place all of the time just so I can see them and get some really cool footage. But I just dump it in and then the other half goes in the other vivarium. And then, yes, the dart frogs go nuts. And I get footage just like this. Making this stuff is really easy. I use the fruit fly media from Josh's Frogs, follow the directions, and then I use uh, this media and one of these cups. And every two weeks, I make a new culture and I let it set and it does its thing. I'm keeping it moist. Super easy and nowhere near intimidating. It's just gross looking, but smells delicious, surprisingly. Keeping everything moist is up to you. I like to mist once every other day, but if you have a mist king or you have some sort of device that can help you, so be it. But I enjoy misting it myself because I get to check out the plants, the frogs, and see how everything is ultimately doing inside these vivariums. And so now the really the only other day-to-day -day type thing, I do check on the springtails uh, once a week. I let oxygen in. I feed them with the cleanup crew, little powder from Josh's frogs. And then I'll add them periodically just to keep the bioactive quote unquote regime going inside these vivariums. So keeping dart frogs is actually really easy, but I think we just get in our head that there are a lot of things that we don't know can be very difficult or seem difficult before we actually understand them. Daily care is visually inspecting, spraying it down to make sure it's humid, and feeding if it's that day. And then trimming plants off and on throughout the course of this thriving ecosystem. It's that simple. You're not handling the frogs and they're not poisonous and ultimately, you're controlling most of this environment with some really good fluctuations that can happen without something, I don't know, going awry. Keeping dart frogs is extremely rewarding. Now I've got a lot of my stuff from Josh's frogs. I've reached out to other folks to help me and it's ultimately progressed me along the way and the step-by-step -step of keeping them is very easy. And if you're keeping aquariums, it's even easier than that because there's not a lot of maintenance that goes into that routineness. It's just the feeding, enjoying them, checking out their beautiful colors and watching their amazing behavior within this little ecosystem. Keeping vivariums is a lot like keeping anything as long as we're putting all of our effort and our knowledge and understanding into gaining more knowledge on it and knowing that we don't know everything about everything, you'll find that this is extremely rewarding. I appreciate you taking the time. Do me a favor, hit subscribe. Leave me a comment. Do you see yourself really having a vivarium any point in your life? And if so, what would you keep? I don't know. I, I think that'd be kind of cool to sit down and, and redo some vivariums or maybe start some new ones. Well, you know what's next. Ow!